Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, Melissa, Felicia, Dave. Good morning, Yvonne. How are you? I am awake <laughs> and I even have some coffee, so I'm doing really well. So what, far, time, so what time is it, Melissa? It's seven. It's not that bad. I'm I'm just a whiner. <laughs> okay, never mind. Never mind. But I'm happy you 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 made the effort to be here. Even oh, at well. seven. Hey, Dave. Hey, good morning. You look like you are the morning person. Oh, I am completely a morning person. I've been up for what four hours already. So uh, that makes two of us. That makes two of us. Yeah. Felicia, what time of night is it? <laughs> Hi, good evening. Good evening. It's eleven it's eleven PM. <laughs> oh my yeah. gosh. And no, you, but it's okay. <laughs> you look good for eleven you look really good for eleven PM. Yeah, she does good any time of day. <laughs> Any Thank you, Dave. <laughs> I'm just trying to keep awake, okay, so that I get through this. And I hope I won't be bubbling up, you know, babbling like the last time when I did. I was like, I actually <laughs> half an hour net before this. Okay. All right. So I hope you're, I'll be concentrated. You're going to do your seven minutes, right? You're going seven to minutes. Uh, well, <laughs> Melissa, Melissa actually timed me. I used up to twelve minutes, so. Okay, maybe, no maybe problem. Maybe a little bit of a grace. Maybe it's about, about 12 to 15 minutes. <laughs> All righty. Um, yes, we're going we're gonna to get right into it. And because you're here, if others are coming in, they'll join. Um, I know Jackie should have come, but she said she has a clash with um, something she's doing. Right. She said she had right. some meetings that she yeah. totally forgot. So yeah. All right. So who is going to start first? Because you're going to press that share button and you're going to put your PowerPoint up. So I suggest oh. you have your PowerPoint on your, your screen. Okay. And then uh, you will, if you see at the bottom of, there's a band and that band carries a share option. So yeah. you will um, select the share and then go to your desktop and click your PowerPoint. We'll see it and then we get going. But before we begin, let's calm all nerves and give God the glory. We are coming to the end of this, this time together. Um, Dave, would you want to take us in? Sure. Thank you. Father, again, we are thankful. Uh, as we are every day from some of us for the day ahead of us and some of us for the day that's been. Um, so yeah. we just take a deep breath, recognizing we are in your presence always. Uh, you are in control. You are continuing working in us, through us, around us, leading us. And I just really look forward to this time together uh, that we can hear hearts and visions and hopes and, um, just process together and, and we're a family and this is just a great family time to to learn from each other so just help Melissa and Felicia just just be uh, be themselves and and speak as you want them to speak and we just give it all of them over into your hands and again we just rejoice that that we know you. in Jesus name amen 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 all right so which of you will start first I nominate Felicia <laughs> uh, you know why? Because I know how good this is, and, and okay. I'll be taking notes and following her illustrious lead because she's yes. Oh, 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 I'm done. And, I tell uh, you, yes. No, that's what good friends do to each other. <laughs> Melissa. <laughs> no. Wonderful, wonderful. Read us out, Felicia. I You're take, amazing. I, I take it from you. I take it from oh. you. So, okay, Melissa. okay, I'm just going to start off first. Okay, good. Uh, not that I want to, but you know, it's just I feel like, okay, at least I'm alert right now in the next half an hour. You might be shutting down. <laughs> exactly. So wait, Dr. Yvonne and uh, Dr. Dave, are we just the two of us for this morning? Um, others should be joining. I am going to go back into the, the, um, the classroom and see how many people signed up. Just Jackie told me she may miss this one because she's having a seminar. But I, I think um, 
Gia is scheduled for this morning as well. So, oh, okay. but we, we do not, we want to honor Dr. Dave's time and your time. So okay. we okay. will begin. It is recorded. So for those who right. have come in there, will hear it. Okay. I'm going to share my screen then. Go ahead. Okay. Um, hmm. Wait. So do you see? Wonderful, yeah. wonderful, yeah. wonderful. Okay. My screen is up? Yes, it is. All is okay, well. Good. And you are number one PowerPoint right now. Yes. Okay, without much ado, I'm just going to start. Thank you very much for listening to my PowerPoint presentation. Uh, it's, it's still a draft, <laughs> okay? Um, of course, I'm still giving some thought as to how am I going to write the whole final project paper, but... Uh, yeah, so please uh, give, me, give me ideas, give me details and all kinds of comments. All right, so um, this is the presentation for the personal assessment 702. It's actually the presentation to write out my whole paper. And out of it is um, following through the syllabus content. There will be chapter one, the book reviews, chapter two, calling uh, or life vision. Chapter three, communication, current ministry, um, then relationships, spiritual formation, academic plan. I've also, in this presentation, I've also put in a, a little self-evaluation and then the appendixes that I will be sharing for the project. So this presentation will cover all these eight chapters plus the appendix. Okay, so for the first book review, um, I will be generally writing on the eight book reviews I have not submitted any book reviews to you yet, Dr. Ivan, but uh, I'm a person who sort of like had to crunch everything towards the end. So I hope I'll get everything out to you on time. <laughs> okay. I'm quite good in, in, in making deadlines in that sense. So, okay. Crunch time is a better time for me to do all this. So I have all the five books that is of the required reading. And the last three, six, seven, and eight, it's from the, um, the recommended reading. So I've chosen um, from the library, the leadership from the inside out, integrity, the courageous, sorry, the courage to meet the demands of reality, and last but not least, the emotionally intelligent manager. So I'll be write, writing the other three book, re, uh, the book reviews on this. Okay, so now coming to chapter two, which is calling. And I look at that as really my life vision. And um, according to our syllabus, uh, it's really writing about, well, to me, I understood it as writing about the exploration and my discovery of my own life vision. And so I'm, I will be taking on a journey in my paper, um, the 5H, which is the hard times, the hard times, the hard times, the hard, high times, the heroes, the heritage and hand of God. And I'll be writing it from, um, from the day where I actually found that I had a need for a purpose. And that came after all of my successful business venture. Like I had all this, but what does it all mean? Where is the meaning? Where is the purpose of it? So I will be taking us from that journey, uh, from meeting a need for a purpose, and then in search of God's calling and purposes for my life. Uh, and in that, I will actually be going through... Um, an excerpt about my trip in Mexico and how I heard God audibly uh, while I was there about my purpose. And then after receiving that, it's really knowing that, you know, there's actually a time of uh, assessing why God has called me into that particular arena. So it was really assessing myself in, in light of um, my, my strengths, my personality, but also, you know, how was I in business and what does it mean? And then what is my leadership acumen for God to call me to actually raise business people? Now, not, I mean, obviously in all of this, I was still being very strategic in my, vis in my vision. You know, I was looking to him. I was going like, okay, God, you know, what does all this mean? Does it mean that I actually start my calling immediately? Which I actually did. And I sort of like, you know, I mean, it's a whole uh, conversation about how I actually did it my way, not God's way. 
and then realizing that, oh, okay, I actually have to assess myself first. I actually have to have a time where God actually needs to build me, you know, put me aside, you know, prepare me. And that was, that's, that's how I came into a time of assessing myself in light of God's calling. And then also searching out, also being very um, focused in, in, in asking God, where is the need? Why is it that you want me to base, raise business people? So of course, I, I immediately started it in Mexico because I thought when I heard God, I, you know, it must be in Mexico. I started it there and I was like, oh, okay, you know, it was such a big mistake. But, you know, putting in all the money and then realizing that, hey, no, that's not where God has wanted you to be, you know. So, but it was a time of just seeking where it was. And then I was in Hong Kong and while I was there, I had the opportunity to be a coach with Peter Drucker Academy. Uh, oh, sorry, just before that, um, during my time of assessment, the best, the best part that has, that has happened and to know that I have to have a time of assessment is when I joined BGU in the MBA course. That was the time that actually gave me an idea that, you know, try to assess yourself. So that's where I actually uh, managed to look into a vision, a, you know, really seeking vision, strategic vision. And then it, it was not called strategic vision then. The course was just called vision. Yeah. And then um, knowing that, you know, I have actually have a time to look out for my strengths. And then also being a Peter Drucker educator. So I was very, very fortunate to work with both uh, Stephen Lee, who is the president of Peter Drucker in, in Hong Kong, and uh, Dr. Peter Liu, who is my PLC. He's the vice president of Drucker. And they actually, they actually uh, told me, you know, that I have this particular unique strength in me that has that is very good in coaching so they gave me the platform they gave me the opportunity to be a peter drucker educator with them and so i was doing coaching in hong kong and i was um at the same time thinking that oh maybe it's not just all about work it's not all about business and so i was actively also um in in the leadership in the leadership team with saddleback when they opened their first um international campus so that was also where i was looking out whether it's the need is in the marketplace or whether the need was in the church or whether it was like an integration of both because i was like you know not too sure and then when i went to the us um again you know searching believing that you know part of where god wants me to 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 actually be ministering to is the hispanic community i went to the us and i got involved with all these uh um churches that was you know, that somehow had Hispanics, but um, that was not where God wanted me to serve. I actually went to Riverville community to, 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 to actually help a church to revitalize. And then that was where I, I realized that, oh, my gifting was uh, leadership development and organizational efficacy. Yeah. And then coming back, to Malaysia was very unexpected. Then I realized that, you know, coming back to Malaysia was so unexpected and to be held back down here. But at the same time, realizing that actually God has given me that good eight years, um, eight years, actually almost close to nine years of um, just preparing myself in coaching, in being open to this, to his life calling, and then to, um, to work with different leaders in business and in faith-based um, organization. Uh, faith-based also, as you can see, in my fourth point, when I was um, helping um, the other pastor, which is Pastor Kenny, to raise up, or rather to, 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 to build a whole new um, uh, compassionate ministry called D154. And, uh, and then that, that, that made me realize that actually, you know, um, God actually was preparing me to be very much more um, uh, integrated in my faith with him. But at the same time, you know, that, that, that all of that goodness and all of the, the gifts and uh, talents that he has given me can be used, can be used either way. And, but, you know, when it comes to my natural language, business was still a natural language for me. Melissa, you appear to be frozen now. Are you okay? 
So it was very easy for me to just, just step into it and say, oh, okay, this is where the cultural gap is. That in our churches in Malaysia, we, 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 tend, to, we tend to view church as the building. Um, of course, there is right now a movement where you know, people realize that they are the church, but they do not know how to bring it and put it into the marketplace or integrate it into the marketplace. So that's where I believe my cultural gap, my, my, my calling is filling that cultural gap. So out of Malaysia, it was really the OVKL, the Overture KL, that sort of like helped me to converge my life calling towards a cultural gap. Because I never knew that, you know, um, my calling, my kind of calling would fill a cultural gap until the OVKL. And right now, of course, ASM. Yeah. So that will be a big focus of what I'll be writing on in my paper. And I intend to communicate church in the marketplace through reestablishing um, my business. Because I had a business for uh, 18 years and I gave it away. I actually had a few businesses and I gave it away when I decided that, okay, you know, perhaps God has wanted, God has called me into a faith-based ministry. Yeah. First, I thought God has just wanted me to be a housewife. So I, went, I gave up everything, went back to Hong Kong to be a housewife for my, with my husband, for my husband. And then I realized that, hey, look, that is totally not, not my, my, my gifting. I was like very restless. Although I was doing well, but I was just very restless. And then that's how I got involved in Drucker and BGU. Uh, yeah, so now it's like coming back to Malaysia, having to reestablish my business. But really the business focus is to, it's to me right now, I look at the business as a church. And then from there, as we are building new businesses and new organizations, they are very much more like ministries to me. So uh, what I have developed in the church in terms of ministry with Riverville Community Center, uh, with Riverville Community Church, I can actually now look at it and say, okay, you know, these are very similar. There is that similarity down there. And, and communicating it through coaching and consultancy, to me, that is discipleship through, um, through actually a discipleship series where I would call it a leaderpreneur series. Yeah, so I'm actually writing out the series myself. And because it's marketplace, I'm writing out that series to, to actually um, marry three areas, leadership, entrepreneurship, and organizational efficacy. Again, using marketplace language, but it's really transformational leadership, in short to say. And I will be using the three framework from the inspiration of leadership, coupled with the, innovation, the innovative creation of entrepreneurship, and then the clock, what that makes the dream work, the wonders of systems and processes. Now, here is where I think while writing this paper, I may have got to look at scriptural uh, backup for three area. I think Jesus is a leader himself. He came and taught us leadership. He actually raised up all these leaders in terms of the apostles, uh, the 12 disciples. Uh, he was very radical in his approach in doing church. He went into the marketplace. He didn't go back to the synagogue, you know, so the innovation of the innovative creation of entrepreneurship. So it's like, how can we actually even be innovative when we come into the church in the marketplace? And Clockwork that makes a dream work. Um, it's really about Christ talking about how we should uh, um, uh, conduct ourselves in terms of our lives. So it's, it's, it's more about consistency, faithfulness, uh, being, um, having a disciplined life, a uh, thought life. So it's, it's, it's really looking at that, but addressing it from the issue of personal leadership as well as organizational uh, efficacy if we are, you know, if you're building an organization. So my current ministry right now is Sovereign, Sovereign Leaderpreneur Academy. Academia is actually, uh, it's actually the, the training center that we use to train the people because we are very focused in raising people, not businesses. Um, but we use the business platform to actually, to actually put the practical steps of leadership for them to, to, to work out uh, whatever they learn in, in leadership. So for example, in church, we learn leadership, but we ask them to practice it into ministry, whether it's internal ministry or external. So down here, we still give them the syllabus, to, the syllabus in terms of the leaderpreneur series. Uh, but really go practice it into their business. That's what we are doing. 
and that's that's my current ministry which is actually my current organization so the three core activities that we we focus on is training establishing new organizations consultancy and coaching so training is really the teaching establishing new organizations are establishing new ministries consultancy and coaching is discipleship okay um, and of course the syllabus expects us to have relationship that we can continue to learn from and gain strength from gain wisdom and my three core communities that i would like to focus that i believe that you know that's going to be helpful throughout my ministry would be my spiritual growth community out of there i already have two person that will also be sitting with uh, dr yvonne they are also in my plc um so already sorry three person and so my spiritual growth community is Andrew. Andrew, who, is, um, who I'm doing one-to-one -one Bible study with. And then Pastor Kenny, he's the one that I have been doing the D15 fall with. And so he's the one that I actually talk a lot about compassionate ministry, how to actually balance that off with business. Um, and then there is my good friend, Leani. She keeps me accountable on almost every level. Like, you know, how am I actually working through with uh, my partner, my my the people that i'm discipling or mentoring and finances even my own relationship with my husband and generally my health and then my expert mentor i i'm still looking out for my expert mentor although i believe dr peter liu would be a very good expert mentor to me and um and through my through my experience with bgu i've actually worked with dr john stanworth and he was the one who actually taught me the servant leadership so we are in touch and so, and because he has written syllabus on servant leadership, perhaps he would be the one that I would also be seeking out. Um, and I don't know, maybe Dave, you could be my expert mentor group because, you know, we are in the same business, we are out there in, in, in business. So I'm still seeking out for one or two more expert mentor group. Then my personal learning community is still, uh, it's, it's still the three spiritual growth community that I've talked to talk to you about but also my pastor my two pastors which is uh pastor richard who is here as well as pastor kenny kevin sorry okay in terms of a call to spiritual growth spiritual formation i think there are three areas of motivation that i would really want to uh to make sure that i have it in place and they are really motivations the motivations of being accountable and always having the exercise, the accountability exercise. And I think having Leani with me as my yoking sister is very good because almost every week, you know, I'll be telling her what I'm doing. And um, in areas that I have a struggle, I actually tell her because I, I just need somebody to, to keep me in check. Yeah. Especially when it comes to personality struggles, like, you know, relationship tr struggles, because I tend to have this dark side about myself where I sometimes think I'm right. <laughs> so I really just need somebody to just keep me in check down there. Yeah. And Bible studies for sure. Um, and then to be very intentional with my Sabbath because I can keep, you know, I like the work that I do so much that God can be in my way sometimes. And I'm like, you know, hello, I know what to do kind of things. Yeah, so I think I have got to keep myself in check down there and I've got to take an intentional Sabbath to know that, hey, look, in the end of the day, it's all not about me, it's all about God. And to understand that this motivation is, it's, it's all about surrendering, further surrendering myself into knowing that he's in charge. Um, so that's my chapter six. And then my academic plans. Yay. I think after ASM 702, I have got one more research methodology and then then it goes down to the real writing, the dissertation. So I intend to do that uh, in April, my dissertation one and two. And I've been invited to join the Luzon Global Forum. So I'm really looking forward to that because it's this time it's really about the marketplace and how everybody from all over the world is doing different things. So I would like to see how I can contribute to the bigger church. Yeah. So that's my finish line. And then, of course, my own self-assessment in chapter, chapter A. And then in my appendixes, uh, Dr. Iman, I intend to put my life mapping, my lifeline, uh, the gift assessment results that I did, my white paper messaging and secret pathway test. And I believe 
that shall be the end. Thank you. I hope I made the 12 minutes mark, maybe 15 this time. Thank you. Thank you, Felicia. Um, I am going to, to, to ask Melissa okay. to, to um, give her feedback. And then I'll ask Dave. I'll, I'll do my last. I took a look at the group and I know that Adair has stepped away. Yes. Um, and I had words from Jackie that she may not be able to slip in for her presentation. So you both have this glorious time together. So um, Melissa, would you mind um, giving your feedback? Do you have feedback for your friend over yonder? Well, um, as I said before, Felicia, this I was so impressed by the detail and thoughtfulness and how you've got it all figured out because you are anointed with this systems and organization and that's your gift the clockwork makes the dream work and uh, you set the bar high friend um I, and i'm just trying to think i wrote some notes down because i wanted to hear more but i think you went back and looped back around and uh touched on some things that i had was just was going to ask you about further but i just like very well done very well done Thank you. Well, yeah, you did it under 30 minutes. Hey. Oh, no. You came in at 29. Yeah, just under a half hour. Okay, sorry. <laughs> oh, no, it's beautiful. You had lots to talk about, and you're always so interesting to listen to. Thank you. Dr. Dave? Yeah, well, well done. That was just excellent. And some of my thoughts, um, I'm... I have a 21 year old son who's graduating from university this next year, and he's very interested in exactly the stuff that you're talking about. And as a 13 year old, he already feels that he wants to be a cultural change agent and help businesses figure out how to do culture. So we actually had a long conversation. And then since then I've talked to Lynn Bell, who is our new MBA director. I don't know if you knew that. Do you know, do you know Lynn? Yes, I met, I met her in OBKL. Okay, good, good, yeah. because yes. she, she had some advice for my son that said, if he wants to figure out how to be a consultant to businesses on culture, he has two choices. Either he finds a company that, is, that does culture really, really well and learn from them, or he take a job with a company that does culture horribly, <laughs> and he suffers and he learns all the problems of it. And so since then, I've had several conversations with him this past weekend. And the reason I bring all this up is one of the things that I told him was, you know, sometimes God gives us a vision early. Often he gives us a vision and, and a sense of calling early on, right? And we often think, this is it. I'm supposed to do this right now. But like we talked about last week, there's often a period of time between here and here that God builds that container. God has to say, okay, I've given you the calling, but now... I need to do a bunch of work in your life to, to get you prepared for that. And so when I listen to your presentation, I go, wow, this is really great stuff because it's so evident. You see the hand of God shaping you and preparing you and giving all these different experiences. Um, so I, I just think it's, it's fantastic. Uh, one thought, um, and we often say at BGU that God loves you, but we have a wonderful plan for your life. <laughs> um, Lynn is trying to re, um, redesign the MBA program um, and to make it more, I had, a, I had about an hour conversation with her last week, to make it more relevant for this next generation where it's not just a traditional MBA, but it's an MBA that understands cultural transformation within businesses, um, small businesses, medium-sized businesses. How do you, what will make BGU's MBA program distinct from other programs that has this element of, of really transformation, personal and, and the organizational transformation? So I just want to plant a seed in your head that I could see you being really involved with that and maybe talking to Lynn and helping BGU shape an MBA program um, because you've got a lot of this content and you've got experience 
and you've got that anointing that Melissa talked about that I think you'd be a great part of a, a possible team and help us, you know, figure that part out. So, so again, just well done. Thank you, Dave. To be very frank with you, I've already been thinking like my leaderpreneur series, how can I use that to actually work with, with uh, BGU on the yeah. MBA? Excellent. Yeah. And I'm th yeah, like for me, I'm thinking like, you know, it's my part of the world, right? Because, you know, MBA is always seen from the Western point of view and, you know, it's all the Western syllabus, but how do I actually attract people here locally and make it affordable down here? Yes. So yeah, so I have that plan too. Thank you. Fantastic. Uh, <laughs> I, and, and I'm growing with anxiety and, and <laughs> wanting to throw in that for the, the, the market, the church as marketplace and um, the church as ministry and business as the church, I caught those phrases, right? And they really meant a whole lot to me in terms of the vision that you're bringing to this Felicia, right? Where the church, church has a syllabus. It just, um, you know, it blows my mind. I am happy to see that we can begin to, to, to formulate living within the church in a way that makes living what we do, all right? And I, I join with Melissa and Dave to commend you on this and on the way in which you managed to, to, to fill in. I did not hear a whole lot on spiritual formation. I missed the spiritual formation bit. So I would invite you to ensure that in your writing you incorporate spiritual formation and i know that's an exciting part of your journey because i i'm not putting words in your mouth but i think the battle for your plan versus the lord's plan mm -hmm. the, the right. battle for your geographical location versus the lord's geographical plan for you has got to be playing a tremendous role in your spiritual formation, right? And yeah. I can see it all dovetailing there, right? But I, I'm really seeing your, your, your dissertation blooming in a new way, you know, that you're able to work through a syllabus in a church. It's just for me the kind of thing that I would want to see and your measurements. And this is what I was saying in the discussion, identifying the problem, the, not, not the cause as much as the problem, mm -hmm. working on the cause. So you measure the problem so that when your results are coming in, you see the change between the beginning and the end. So you can see your effectiveness. Okay, thank right? you. So you will yes. have to be focusing on what problems you're solving with the syllabus, with the plan, right? Mm -hmm. And really have data that supports the problem. And so you will have data at the end that shows that you've moved from point A to point B and transformation has in fact taken place. But this is okay. really so exciting. Thank you. All right. So, so just a point of clarification, Dr. Yvonne. Mm -hmm. um, so what, what, what you're saying right now in terms of... Uh, Means nothing for ASM, all for dissertation. I stepped okay. out of my role. <laughs> all right, right, all right, all right. Okay, um, well, I was going to wait, wait. There was, a question asked in, <laughs> there was a question asked in week five. Yeah. Okay. Right? And sometimes yeah. we say in our response to how will you know when it is done that right. we have no knowledge of how we will know. So okay. I've been trying to help people to begin to think okay. that you will know if you leave the cause yeah. and okay. get to the result so that you're working backwards. 
And we will do okay. more of that in the PLC meeting. Right? But you know, All this right. is preparation ground and you did excellently. Thank you. Thank you. I know that Jackie is coming. Sorry, Dave, go ahead. I just I just want to add real quick, Felicia, as you as you work on this paper, get as many references as possible in these books that you've read. Cite as many as, as you can that all ties things together because right now your this paper is going to be foundational for your dissertation. So often what happens, you're going to go back and, and those references are going to really, you'll save yourself a lot of time if you cite as many things as possible now because all those will make it in your dissertation and, and take a lot of stress off you and it will tie all together. All right. All right. Excellent, so excellent yeah. advice. And, and really, um, when we say we're going to solve something, and it sounds real nice and good, we really need to say, um, what is the problem we're solving? You know, and support that with documentation. And when you cite documentation, um, like you say, over a thousand people are, you need to cite your source. All right, so if you say generally 80% must say what was the source of your um, of your information. All right. And, and along with that, when you do, and for everybody, when you do your book reports, again, cite as much as possible because I, it's, it's amazing when you get to the dissertation stage, when you can go back and look at your book reports and just pull those quotes out very, very quickly. Uh, it saves so much time and frustration yeah. rather than yeah. go back and reread those Researching books. Researching for new material, yeah. yeah. Thank you, Jackie. Um, because I know you're in between sessions, I would let you start now and ask Melissa to allow you to, all right? Um, so you can get your PowerPoint up on your screen and select share. And Melissa, you notice I didn't ask you for consent? I'm all good. It's all good, Dr. Yvonne. Hello, Jackie. I'm glad to see your face. There you are. Go, girl. Sorry. At the bottom of your screen, um, Jackie, you will have a banner, and it has share in green. You select that banner and right. it will take you to your desktop. And once you get to your desktop, you can select your PowerPoint and begin. Sorry, I'm just sharing. So Felicia, you had dropped your PowerPoint in the um, Dropbox for me, right? I already did, Dr. Yvonne. Right, thanks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're there, Jackie. Yes, we see something coming up now. You're seeing that? I'm seeing Jacqueline 45128. Is that what you want us to see? Jackie? Can you hear me? It looks like she's logged in twice. I wonder if that's posing a problem. Thank you. 
Jackie, can you hear me? Yes, I'm hearing you now because it disconnected there. I don't think I was hearing you though, but yeah. I'm hearing you now. It disconnected a while ago. Um, you were logged in because you, you were logged in twice, so I, I removed one of your login. So can you see the Zoom screen on your computer now? Because I'm using an iPad and I think that's probably oh, Okay. All right. So that must have been the 45128. Okay. Are you seeing the, the, the banner at the bottom that says share? No, mine is at the top and I'm just not... Um... Okay. You're not seeing what um, the icon to share? Yeah, I'm seeing share, but it's not taking me to the Dropbox that um, that Dad put it in. No, you needed to have it on your desktop before you get to that. That's the challenge. Bring the PowerPoint to your desktop. Take. Do not try to go into to the Dropbox to take it. Just bring it to your desktop. Go in, open it, and and have it saved on your desktop. You know what, Yvonne, go ahead. Let me just sort this. Go ahead. go ahead with Melissa. Okay, the share will have to be from your desktop, so you must bring it to the desktop. All right. So then, Melissa, you take the chair now and allow Jackie to get her PowerPoint ready. All right, I am um, doing the same thing. I have it on my desktop. And, and, and you go to the, the Zoom and there's a banner that has the mute, invite, manage participant. Yeah, I see. I saw. Okay, yeah, I know. I see. So I see. Share is the green one. So once you press that, you your desktop will be displayed and then you just choose your PowerPoint. Yes. See? Wonderful. You're there. You're there. You're in. And you're moving very well. Okay, here we go. All right. Um, well, I was trying to keep in mind the seven and eight slide uh, <laughs> thing with the five to seven minute thing. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm trying to be economical, but I had to include this verse because I like it. Awake, O sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. So be careful how you live. Don't look, live or look like fools, but or maybe you should look like fools. But like those who are wise, make the most of every opportunity in these days. Don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. But we're all fools for Christ, aren't we? Mm -hmm. C.S. Lewis, I love this. I pulled some quotes from our reading. I know we have to incorporate them in our paper and this one just fit it just kind of went off in my spirit the world is a great sculptor shop we are the statues and there is a rumor going around the shop that some of us are someday going to come to life C.S. Lewis and I thought that went so well with the Waco sleeper coming to life waking up to God's call and our responsibility to steward cultural transformation so then and now I, I all I know is um, I don't really know anything but I, I guess I'm approaching this paper more from my own story and what I've learned from it, looking back and uh, looking forward, because I, unlike Felicia, I don't have this all figured out. Um, I'm still in the exploratory phase of why I'm here and what I want to do um, as a result. But I do have these turning points that I... Um, wrote down just to kind of look things over. I guess that's the life mapping part and and what led me here. And I won't go into detail on every little piece of the journey, but I'm certainly probably going to touch on some of that in my paper. Uh-oh, why isn't it turning? 
Um, hmm, it's stuck. It's stuck. It gives us, it gives us, it's giving us an opportunity to look at this beautiful <laughs> map. <laughs> I am really just oh, maybe at I'm... the map and, and understanding <laughs> you by just looking at it. Oh, well, okay. So, um, actually, I see a little arrow here. Maybe that's what's going to work. But yeah, I, I felt like, um, you know, the, the inciting incident really in, in uh, the arc of my story was probably when I was 14 and visited an Indian reservation and um, with my ninth grade youth group. And then at 19, going with my mom to, where did we go? Cancun on a you know, a vacation to a resort, right? A club med thing. And then going to Chichen Itza or whatever the nearby site was and passing through these villages and looking out the window of the bus and seeing the people that were working at the hotel were going home to little mud huts where they didn't even have running water. And the just the disparity and the reality of the disparity just really struck me. And so then when I went on to college, I inter majored in international relations and pursued international development and the Peace Corps. And, and it all kind of went from there. And I met my husband there. We moved to Greece for eight years. Uh, we visited Russia, which was eye-opening as well to see what was happening in the communists. The, the wall had just come down. And remember when the, they were living in cardboard boxes in Red Square and that was on the cover of Time? We were there right there. I think we even saw the guy that was on the cover. And anyway, we had our two kids there, got my MBA in international management, and then we ended up getting involved in the church and ministry there, and I went to Rama, and then there I ended up working after I graduated with the Christian Business Leaders International and really fell in love with this whole faith and work thing, and uh, then we moved back to Colorado started our Killian Creative Company, which is a writing and publishing, ghostwriting um, uh, that we have been doing now for 17 years and I wrote some books and then I started working with Trim where I work now I've been working with this organization for 10 years I actually did a book for her that did really well so she hired me full-time to uh, oversee all of her content and that's what I currently do and with her in partnership with her we launched the Institute of Global Leadership um, and now I'm getting in more involved in the women's empowerment, which is something she's always also been involved in as well. And but I'm kind of taking it a step further with wanting to uh, write more about it and develop a curriculum. And anyway, that's kind of why I'm here to do, I think. Um, are you still there? Yes, we're all here. Totally absorbed. <laughs> So this is another quote from our book. Uh, Responsibility is a knife we use to carve our own inimitable features in the panorama of being. It is the pen with which we write into history, a fresh creation of the world. Um, and I, I just feel like taking responsibility and uh, helping people do that is kind of part of this. You know, you've heard me talk about agency and, and uh, um, that, you know, helping people do that respond. And I loved what Vaclav Havel said about that whole idea of that. So our identity is found in this. How are we responding? Um, even that's our spiritual formation. Uh, how are we responding to God's call in our on our lives? And then Grace Lee Boggs, you cannot change any society unless you take responsibility for it, unless you see yourself as belonging to it and responsible for changing it. And I feel like that sort of the undergirds the whole transformational leadership. Uh, and I think we're all called to do that. Chapter one, literature review. Um, kind of self-evident. Here are the books that I will be uh, providing book reviews for. Of course, the five required books. And I've added in there, Let Your Life Speak, uh, Culture Making, and The Call. Chapter two, Calling and Vision. And right now I'm just trying to do some word crafting around what that looks like. So I, I've got a few statements um, I'm on a mission to build the capacity of ordinary women to lead extraordinary change in every culture and in every sphere. I purpose to empower women to transform the cultures of workplaces, marketplaces, industries, cities, churches, governments, and countries through an asset-based leadership development process. 
And I've been calling this modeling agency. My modeling agency curriculum helps women with issues of identity, wholeness, vision, and vocation in a small group setting. Participants are equipped with principles and strategies for discerning and overcoming internal and external barriers to growth and greater influence. I would like to develop an ongoing program to help participants continue working toward fulfilling their leadership calling and or become facilitators of their own small groups. But this again is all exploratory. I'm just finding language now. Um, I had written for the overture class some of this personal story. You know, I kind of felt like I did a mini personal assessment in my paper that I did for the overture. Um, you know, looking at uh, where my life was taking me and what I was learning uh, from the class and how it was forming me and some of the ideas that were gelling. And I actually came up with the A-G-E-N-C-Y model, which is the acronym for agency, and wrote about the, those components being asset-aware, growth-minded, emotionally intelligent, negotiation-oriented, connectivity-driven, and yielded to the Spirit of God. So that was my fancy thing that came out of that. Here's another quote by the Arbinger Institute. Um, success as an in an organization is a function of whether we're in the box or not. And our influence as leaders depends on the same thing. In the moment we cease resisting others, we're out of the box. We can stop betraying ourselves toward them and we can stop resisting the call of their humanity upon us. I thought that was beautiful. So chapter three, communication. Steps to expand my capacity within my sphere of influence include developing a turnkey to curriculum, developing my speaking and facilitation skills, developing a network of supporters, and developing a virtual presence in the online community, potentially. Chapter four, current ministry. And again, I, I don't feel like I'm really in ministry. I have a day job. I, I work with this Trim Institute or Trim International, and under that umbrella, I oversee all their content initiatives. <clears throat> we have started a Women Who Shape Our World mentorship program. I've been working with... Uh, and also that I wrote the materials for and continue to moderate the group coaching calls for executive life coaching. Uh, she has a kingdom school of ministry that's uh, every year in multiple places around the world. She also has a foundation. Uh, Women and girls empowerment is real core to the work of that foundation, which we're just, again, it's, it's uh, in its infant stages um, and community development is part of that vision. And then Killing Creative, as I mentioned, is uh, the company my husband and I run as well uh, with coaching and consulting, writing and publishing. Um, and I personally also am involved in workshops and meetups and things that we're doing around that uh, field of writing and uh, editorial. And then this, <laughs> this excuse me. Uh, let me mute Jackie. I'm sorry about that. I'll just mute her now. And then I have this agency kind of in the shadows because it's sort of what I'm, I mean, it's not sort of, it is what I'm doing, um, you know, just in, in the, uh, honestly, it, on the weekend. Um, we did start a group last January for 12 weeks that met on Thursday nights from six to eight Thursday evenings. And I kind of did a test, a beta of what this would look like, this kind of a program and we learned a lot from that. I was doing that in partnership with another friend of mine. We co-facilitated that. But, you know, I'm moonlighting on this whole thing. It's not my main gig, and it's just something I'm doing on the side. And, again, I'm exploring, and it's kind of a hobby. Uh, what, where do all those blue lines come from? That's interesting. So, yeah, that's just kind of there on the side, but hopefully it'll expand. And in expanding that vision... I, I hope to continue pursuing alliances and partnerships with uh, Queen Esther's Closet, which is the location where we do these. We have had in the past, and we will do this again in January. We'll start another 12-week group and retweak uh, our materials and uh, presentations. And that is called Queen Esther's Closet, where we do that. It's actually a consignment store, and Ann Woodruff is my co-facilitator. I've also started working with the Denver Institute for Faith and Work, Joanna Meyer in particular, who is a BGU alumni and a friend of mine, and uh, a kindred spirit when it comes to women in the workplace and vocation and calling and leadership. I am also on this board committee of the Trim Foundation and uh, on the advisory committee of an organization called Fields of Life which just recently connected with them and the work they're doing uh, around women and women's empowerment. 
And then Grit and Virtue is a, a local organization. Charlene Ortiz is a friend of mine. And uh, you can go to gritandvirtue.org or .com and uh, see what they're doing there. That's an exciting, uh, it's a ministry again, but it's also directed toward professional women and developing women in their calling and their uh, professional life. Um, and then Vital Voices, I've been following them for a while and I don't have any inroads to them or know anyone, but I would really like to connect with them. And um, I just really love their work. Again, vitalvoices.org. Um, it looks like an amazing organization. Other mentors I'd like more, uh, to more actively cultivate relationships are these people down here. Um, so yeah, I don't. Does anyone know any of those people? Probably not. Okay. Now, the goal of spiritual formation is to increase our trust and dependence on God as the deepest motives of our heart, as we learned from Brad Smith. God-given wiring means that we will probably be spiritually formed the most when we practice spiritual formation activities that are most consistent with that wiring. I thought that was a little enlightening. Um, um, thinking, uh, I guess God doesn't speak to all of us in the same way. So I'm, I'm looking at this going, Dr. Yvonne, you asked, uh, <laughs> Felicia, I'm like, I don't know how I'll be more intentional about my spiritual formation, but I know from the syllabus, one of the things that we're looking at is maybe the dark side of our gifts and exploring how we're going to maybe um, work with that intentionally and mindfully. Areas needing growth for me include overcoming self-doubt and, and fear of judgment. Um, I will purpose to be more mindful of living outside of the box and into my giftedness and calling. And I would like to pursue or explore more formal spiritual formation process with a spiritual director I'm not sure how that would look, but I've heard of it. And then chapter seven, my academic plan. I plan to graduate, hopefully, um, from this program would be good. The next class I'm going to take is the met research methodology class this winter. Um, I'd like to engage with and learn from the work of the Empowerment Institute, Gail Straub and David Gershon. I've tried reaching out to them and I haven't been able to hear, uh, get a response from them so I'm not sure uh, what they're doing if they're not maybe doing that work anymore but uh, they've actually produced a little mini documentary in, in 2014 that really started this whole conversation for me uh, called Delivering Agency and that was just a big eye-opener and aha and really resonated with my heart and I watched it so many times um, and sent it to people and I should have put a link in here and sent it to all of you but and, but now I don't know where they went, <laughs> what they're doing. They seem to drop off the planet. Um, and then based on your question to me, Dr. Yvonne and the discussion group, group, I think it was last week, you asked me, you know, you said, what's your research plan for tracking the need identified and the progress made as a result of my proposed intervention? And I, I plan to figure that out going forward. That's a good question. And I planned it, I would like to do that in partnership with the Trim Foundation and Fields of Life and potentially this Vital Voices. And that is all I have for you today. Oh, and that was not nearly five to seven minutes, was it? Wow. But it was complete. It was complete. Um, I'm so wanting to step in. Um, and I will reverse the order this time around. Uh, you will need to, to put in the chat for me um, the acronym for the model. I, I thought that was quite nice. And I wanted to go straight to a theme that runs through your presentation. I don't know. It, it came to me because I tend to posit things in this the same way and I have a mentor who for each time I say those three words he shouts as loud as he can stop saying it and I want to shout as loud as I can to you to stop saying it because you have rolled out for us a very logical well thought through plan and what you have left to do when I meet with you and your PLC is to determine which of them you are going to do your dissertation focus on, which will be the beginning of 
the many things you will do because your dissertation is not your final work. It is just the beginning of your work. If you look at somebody like Dr. Dave now, who is writing and releasing books, who is working the dissertation phase, merely um, pushed him into the world of who he is. And the discovery process is all of what you've been doing here. As mm -hmm. far as the, 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 the um, assignment is concerned, you nailed it. You have actually looked at each chapter and I can see you building on it very, very well. Um, you know, Melissa, you know, and he is telling you, maybe you are not hearing because you're thinking it should be different from what you're doing. And stop. What, are the, what are the three words never to say? I don't know. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. I, I, oh, yeah. yes. So yeah. this, is, this is why I'm reversing it. Like I'm slowing down. I want to speak that you hear it. Immediately following those words, I don't know, comes all the knowledge with nothing missing. <laughs> right? And, and the calling, which doesn't have to be the calling at this juncture is where you have been placed and what he is placed in your spirit to do. There is no finite calling. The, the, the you and who you are that makes you gravitate towards this particular thing you do is how he has wired you to do all of what you're doing. Am I making sense? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Right. And sometimes the anxiety to come to a specific line and a specific word and a specific paragraph is not what it is about. It may be just a single thing called to serve. And look at the areas of your service, and you may well see where he's called you to serve. That's my take on it. Um, you have the making for your dissertation in this. You have your passion in here. And you also have a keen awareness of what you need to learn to move forward. And all of that is the equipping to go. And uh, artists is in you, beautifully presented and well narrated. Um, you've done well with this. I see the business, and this is the beauty of us. Um, Felicia produced the business acumen, and she showed you how you move into business and bring business into the church and, and really begin to develop the church in a holistic perspective. And you've come with an acute sense of delivery to women. And I wish you had defined your target market. So, because this is, a, this is in my mind, a targeted um, approach. And there are specific persons to whom you will move to meet. I don't know if you will go outside of um, academia to meet people who are in the fields, wherever. But if you write a book, you're meeting just about anyone who has that need. So you're well on your way and congratulations. I'll shut up now because Dave, you may want to add something to what I'm saying or you may have seen a different perspective. No, I was laughing as you were talking, Yvonne, because you were saying so many of the things that I would say, except much better. <laughs> but, but Melissa, I, I laugh too because you do say, I don't know, and then you lay out this incredible life calling and vision that is so detailed and so obvious probably to everybody else, but except maybe you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, um, I, I see all these patterns in your whole life flow, and, and I just go, wow, you are, you are, it, it is, 
it is so evident in so many ways. And I also laughed because when I started uh, with BGU, Ike said, I don't know a lot as well. I didn't have a clue why I was in the DTL program. Uh, I was encouraged by a couple mentors. And when I took this class, which was in a little bit different format then, um, I didn't really know what I was supposed to do at all. And, it, and so I, you remind me of kind of my own journey where this is a time to really just step back to bring synergy to all of it. And this whole convergence uh, uh, idea that Brad talks about is so obvious in you. Yeah. So this is a great opportunity just to bring it all together and mm -hmm. ask God, what's the next step? Mm -hmm. And just walk with, with everybody in the BG community because it, <laughs> I don't think there's any any uh, lack of clarity. At it's least this, I agree. Right? I totally agree. Yeah. Extremely clear. I can see your dissertation. I just see you needing to determine which yeah. era will be your focus. Yeah. And the reason why I said what I said to you um, is that when you said not knowing how to measure is simply not itemizing the problems that are result that you see that you're trying to, to, to fix. Yeah. So you say there are too many women who are probably just not sure, lacking direction. You can pinpoint that so that you have the problems of all the persons, how the problems are manifested in their lives is what you are correcting. So when you identify those problems, they become measurable. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I've been pushing back in, the, in my response to each student is that you have the cause down pat, but you have not focused on what the problem generates. <laughs> the actual problem and when you focus on the problem then measuring your um success or failure becomes clear to you because the problem has to be resolved or at least be lessened you got me i, I have am i making you. sense all right yeah so yeah. what what did you see in these women that made you think they would benefit from this and and having seen that um you're about to correct that by doing what you're doing <laughs> but when you get into your project design uh, methodology you're going to have to do your problem definition in a way that you 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 can quantify it and do qualitative analysis to prove the results later on not for this class, but I just wanted you to have that in your head. Can I ask one real quick question, Dr. Yvonne? Sure. Um, when, uh, when you talk about, are you, did you say a target market or identify, rather than trying to reach every woman everywhere on the planet doing all things? Yes. And all if, things if, that is what, if that is what you want to do, then it's okay. You just didn't say. And so the question for me was, who are you reaching? Is there a specific group or is it all women? Okay, so I didn't say, I never really did say um, down here, empower, empower women. Right, but we, just. And, and, and specifically, I feel like there are people that deal with women and um, other empowerment, empowering women mm -hmm. and healing and, and all these things. And I, I specifically want to deal with leading uh, leadership development. Okay. And empowering okay. women to lead okay. as okay. leaders. Right. So you will be looking at would-be leaders and leaders. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. And just to speak to that clearly, though, um, okay. adding that would help me to know that that is your target market. Um, using a business term really but um, though okay. you're targeting women in leadership 
Well, they're not already in leadership. Or I want them to enter preparing, leadership. Or you're preparing women for leadership. Whichever and way. I guess they would have to have that calling as well. But, you know, right. I guess the mission-driven women, and I think there are uh, there is that group of women who have that sense of mission, right. but they haven't felt validated or equipped uh, to pursue Agreed. it. Agree, agree. So, so, so as long as you identify them, right, and having identified them, you also identify what is causing them not to, and you're addressing that. All right. Thank you very much. All right. That's very helpful. Thank you so um, much. Florian, Jackie, Felicia. Do you want to add a word or two to Melissa's presentation? Anything you want to ask, say, seek clarification or encourage? Well, can I just add uh, to what I've already, perhaps already spoken earlier to Melissa, that, her, that the timeline that she has written out, I think that just shows such the timeline that she has. It's, it's like, it's such a, gradual preparation by the Lord for her to be where she is today, you know, understanding the kind of um, challenges that women go through. And I especially like the very fact that um, she has that leadership development and women's empowerment. It's like everything is preparing her towards writing those syllabus and in, in perhaps even in writing the syllabus in the last 10 years for the Trim International, it's, you know, it's the core of where, you know, it's, it's like that's, that's how God has really uh, called her to, you know, to understand all of the content towards how women need to be empowered and in leadership especially. Yeah. Good preparation ground. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Yeah, I agree. I mean... Yes, Jackie, we heard you. And I'm just, that's yeah. difficult. But I mean, as, as Mel Melissa keeps saying she doesn't know, but it, she does know. <laughs> Maybe it does look so much, but really, yeah. I mean, I, her life, it's, it just shows where she, she needs to go yeah. and what she's been doing. And I think she has been prepared all this time with her travel, um, all the people she has met over time. I'm just really, really thrilled with her, her journey. You see, Melissa, sometimes we're looking for a particular name or title that fits. And I'm one of those persons who know that I never arrived at it. But, and, and that it will not always define what I do. The consistent thing in it is that I will be journeying alongside persons. That's the only thing I know. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, sometimes I feel like what I'm trying to do is help okay. other people try to figure out what they want to do, but I don't know particularly what I want to do outside right. of that. <laughs> I am journeying alongside, and I had to become comfortable with that. I always love, I told my staff when I was leaving after 30 years, I wanted to see every one of you be greater than I was. And I watch when they get into management, and I watch when they go up, but I didn't know because I was looking for a title for something else, but it was simply that, just to journey alongside, to bear thank you, thank you. pain and so on. So, you know, don't look for something that probably is in front of your face. Just ask God to allow you to absorb it and to let it manifest mm. itself in whatever way he chooses. I bless you and I thank you so much. Um, Jackie, are you ready for us now? While Jackie's coming on, Dave, I felt I cut you off when you were speaking. Was there anything else you wanted to say to Melissa? No, everybody else said it. It was wonderful. <laughs> okay, because somehow in my head I felt you had not finished when I chimed in. No, it's fine. Great uh, job, Melissa. And, and Jacqueline, get going now. You can show us your PowerPoint. Dave, I so value your taking time out of your work day this morning. Thank you so much. 
Jackie, are you ready? I'm not hearing her. Okay, something is happening. I'm hearing you. Just okay, on. and I'm hearing you now. Beautiful, and your PowerPoint is right here. Good. So you're ready to begin. Yes, thank you very much. Good morning, ladies. Morning, guys. How are you? Good morning. We're good. We're good, and good morning, we're hearing you well. All right. Um, chapter one. Um, I think I don't know if I need to go through this, but it just speaks to all the books that um, I'll be reporting on. So I won't take much of my time with that. Uh huh. Chapter two speaks to the calling or my life vision. And over my life, I have seen myself building a lot of programs, institutions. I don't necessarily stay with them. I build them, pass them on, and watch them grow. And I believe that's my calling. Um, and, and what has been on my heart is young men of Jamaica, because the studies show that 70% of our young men do not pass enough exams to matriculate to university. So many of them fall out of the system. And of course, we can see what that would do to any family or any nation. 85% of our universities are now filled with female. Uh, we have dysfunctional homes. We have one of the highest crime rates in the world. We have 60% um, of our violence being domestic violence. And that has been attributed to the fact that our men are not functioning. They have not taken up their true roles. Um, I know this is probably different from many parts of the world where women are not seen, but in Jamaica, 85% of the women, people in management are women. So that's part of how, um, how I see uh, my, my calling. Um, so it would be influencing the youth, the young men, and family development policies. Um, so I'm looking at a giftedness or resocialization program for young men. I started this uh, approximately, um, it was two, it was about eight years ago when I, I looked at my, I called it a make your mark camp. And I s did a one month road resocialization every year for young men who, who either going to, going to um, mid school or leaving high school. Um, I have not done it in two years because of time, but I think, um, I know that's where my calling is. And I have two sons, so I know what the challenges are with growing men in Jamaica. Um, so in terms of working through this vision, I'd be in influencing our business partnerships, the church's role, the family and government policies in Jamaica. And of course, my discernment, I'm looking, my prayers, my life experiences, my spiritual, my natural gifts, the community and the opportunities and trials, I think have all, have all brought me to this position today. Because looking at my family, my sons, I think I've shared with the ladies, um, one of my sons got kidnapped and so it's a, it's, I've seen a challenge for young men and I know what could be, what needs to be done and I just need to be, be committed to doing it. I know I, I work in, run my own business, but it, it's, it's about just moving in the right direction. And my life map showed that, I don't have my life map here, but my life map showed, I mean, I started, I think, working very early, finished university early, got married very early as well. So my life has been about just planning, organizing, building, and, and working on other people. Is that good? Maybe it's not so good, but anyway, that's what I do. And the, the five H's I think were very instructive for me during the presentations, and that brought home to me a number of the things that have honed and have brought me to where I am today for my calling. And I'm still praying that this is my calling. It still, it sits on my heart. Every time I try to look back at other things like corporate, it doesn't, it certainly doesn't make me sing. It doesn't give me, give me um, comfort. So I'm going on to chapter three, which is communication. My current sphere of influence is with the private sector, um, the government agencies and ministries and transform life church, the high schools and universities. So I plan to expand, expand the capacity and influence them through 
partnering with a giftedness program and mass weddings. Um, those are two of my big callings, I think. This vision came to me about six years ago during mass weddings for Jamaica because 40% of our, of our people who live together, 40% of our couples live together unmarried. We only have 15% of our population being married. Um, and, and looking at private and public schools, you see the difference with, in children who come from homes where they're not, parents are not together. So um, the giftedness and re-socialization re -socialization program for men is, 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 is what I'm seeing. So I'll be also partnering with Operation Save Jamaica and reinstituting the Make Your Mark camps. There are several media that I would use, um, curriculum, a weekly school intervention. So that I started doing, as I said, six years ago, and I need to complete it. Um, material for the transformation and re-socialization program, because I have worked with a number of committees over the last 20 years, different ministries of youth, education, culture, um, the private sector. So I've, I've gone through, I've worked with all the transformation of our education system in Jamaica. So I'm going to use that background and continue to use that medium. I'm going to renovate a building downtown for the training for these young, young men. And um, I'm going to, of course, use a social media online program for training. Chapter four looks at the current ministry. Um, the goal is to expand Make Your Mark Consultants, which is my current um, organization, and to include what I, what I call the MYMC Transformational Center. And that would include the giftedness and working with the young men and the families. Um, what I need to do, I think, to, to do the transition is to assess my current culture, my environment, which I spoke to renovating a building, um, the structure, the job design of the people I know have, um, the skills and knowledge, the policies and the procedures. And of course, the tr transition checklist would speak to the people planning, documentation, training, and the sustainability. Um, I'm going to, I have started exploring a funding proposal. I've, I've gotten two samples and identified two organizations that would look at funding of, of, um, project like, like those that have, have, uh, identified. And I said, again, renovating the building, I'm going to be signing two some MOUs with the partner organizations, my church, Transform Life Church, the government ministries, PSOJ and Operation Save Jamaica. Uh, my relationships, um, so I'd be preparing for greater areas of influence and responsibility, so I'd be engaging my PLCs, my expert mentorship and mentor group, um, or the two specific government agencies I'm seeing, Ministry of Education, Youth and Information, and the Ministry of Culture and Entertainment, and I'm also including the Ministry of, of um, Industry and Commerce. Just yesterday, I heard our minister, I think it was on a JLP platform or a government platform, not government, a party platform speaking to families and how we need to get our young men back on track. Um, I'm going to engage the Jamaica Council of Churches and the private sector organizations I see here, the Chamber of Commerce, the manufacturers and the exporters, and, in, and engage Operation Save Jamaica. Um, this is just a photo of myself with the Minister of Education and the pastor. We, we just had a a conference on productivity. Um, spiritual formation, um, a plan to address my growth and strengthen my character has a lot to do with my PLCs and my, uh, my EMGs. I find that they're a good source for me because they, they most, the PLCs know me very well. They're very honest. Um, the EMGs are more on the corporate and business side, so they would be able to develop, help me to develop that side of my life. So I'm devising or, well, I would think that since October, um, I've been able to discern a bit more about my spiritual gifts, my discipline, my rebellion, and the patterns of trust in God. So I just need to work those through and be more, I think, um, more understanding of what they are and how they impact what I do. And of course, my strengths, my God-given limits, weaknesses, hardships, and opportunities and experiences. I know what those are because I identified those at the beginning of the program. So it's just to, I think, work through how these will help me to grow and, and, and 
and, and how my character can be strengthened by improving them, looking at the flesh and all the, all the issues that um, my trust, how, how, how much do I trust God and how much have I given over to him. I think it's a continuous process for me. Um, and what I found, and I must say that this program has done a lot for me in terms of my reading and my growth and just understanding who I am and, and how I need to, how much more I need to give, give to God um, and to engage those around me. Um, yes, in chapter seven, my academic plan, of course, is to continue with, with BGU, looking at the design methodology program in, 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 in January. Um, mentoring women, um, transformational leadership. And my mentoring relationships would include my EMGs and my PLCs. And my research plan, looking at giftedness, doing giftedness assessment, youth development in Jamaica, marriage incentive programs, influencing the government policy, a relationship between youth development, marriage and violence. And of course, attending conferences. And chapter eight is self-evaluation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jackie. Thank you. I am proud of this presentation. I, I, I like, I am happy, very, very happy and thankful. I think proud is the wrong word. Um, just to see it, the course being useful to your self-development um, amidst the busy life you lead you've spent the time to, to really glue into this and to make it a part of your living. And for me, I, I admire academia. I see its value. I, I now know that when you get to the top of your game, you get eager to learn more. So the more you learn is the less you know. But I also want to know that there is a inner growth that comes from this rather than just writing the right things on the paper. And so when I, I listen to all three of you, I am equally thankful to God that there is some kind of a, a guiding star that is pulling things together um, validating his love for you all and um, showing you that you are for such a time as this. And you can use the equipping that he's given you for such a time as this time. And I hope in the process you're also seeing that he has been guiding you molding you and making you for this time. And so you're very present, you're very current, you're looking at what is, and you're looking at what he's calling you to do. Another heartfelt, excellent presentation, three excellent presentations, all coming from different perspective because you're all different parts of the body but also making their own mark on your lives. I, I thank you for this. Uh, Dave? Yeah, Jackie, this, I'm just so impressed. You are just this laser focus, um, and it's so obvious of your life journey and, and all of your experiences. Um, so strong. I mean, it's like there's no ambiguity <laughs> whatsoever in what you feel called to do, and it's obvious, right? you know, much like Melissa, and Felicia, both, uh, all three of you, you know, it's it's fun sitting back and watching and, and having you put all this together because, you know, I know it's a life journey, but when you can get concise like this, it just brings so much clarity. And uh, I see you, Jackie, as just being a force in Jamaica. And uh, it's, just thank you for sharing that. And moving ahead, um, how do you, my, my question is, it, it seems like everything is so so clear and laid out. What, what do you see the biggest struggles in developing all of this and moving forward? Uh, would be to get uh, get by getting buy in for on the on the um, 
the marriage side. Yeah. The youth side is much easier because that's so, it, it touches everybody. Uh. But because of our history, um, we don't have a history of getting married. We don't have a history of, of um, men and women having very good relationships. So I think that would be my greatest struggle. But I do believe I see a breaking point in our country. Um, I hear leaders on the platform speaking about it. And because the domestic violence has gotten so high, um, I, I, I think I, it's, it's something I want to do. Yeah. I know it's very hard, but it came, as I said, this vision came to me about six years ago and I parked it. I, br I took it to somebody and at a, a church and um, a religious leader and he kind of, they said, yeah, of course, it's wonderful. But of course, maybe that won't bring people into church fast. So um, I believe that I need to just do what I have to do because I, I know that, I know deep in my heart it, it will help because I see the difference. My sister is a teacher and you see the difference with children who come from homes that are structured and there is a, you see the difference whether we like it or not. So, um, and there's a difference in how a man treats a woman when he, he's married to her or he, is, he has been trained in a particular way um so i do what i can do before yeah, i go yeah. well, what I, what I, the, the word that comes to mind when i watch this and i listen to you is tenacious that <laughs> that you will be a I, I have my own my new puppy in my office here um you you will just be a dog with a bone and you will not let this go and people will listen to you because they will not have a choice <laughs> 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 yeah, and you know, Dave, what I hounded Jackie, and, and I remember her saying, you know who I am, and I, 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 I bounced because I didn't know precisely who she was. And then getting to know, as a matter of fact, um, after she asked me that question and I struggled, I happened to open a mail from my insurance company, which is one of the biggest insurance companies in Jamaica. And suddenly, I always look at the bottom to see the board members and so on, because it was relating to shares or something. And the name that I've been courting all this while was written on it as a director. So I said, oh, that's why I ought to have known who I am, who she is. But Jackie knows by now that I shun the social um, structures of Jamaica and my calling is not to that area. But as I think of her, I think of her as being rightly positioned. On Sunday, I did this um, thing for some teachers and students of a class of 1985 and I spoke about being rightly positioned. I looked at Esther, who knows if you're called and I think that would fit you because you somehow reside in the King's Palace, right? Mm -hmm. And you would be rightly positioned if I want to know who is who and who to connect with. Jackie is a resource for that because her work has been around um, the power brokers and the movers and shakers. So hers is the task to get them into commitment. And the one thing I would say about the, the look at marriage to which you're called is to build your conversation around not just the symbolic marriage, but the responsibility, commitment, and intrinsic value. Because right. when you do another statistics on marriage, you may find that very few are being positive impact mm -hmm. to the children who are in that marriage because they may not have gone into divorce, but the marriage itself right. is not yeah. wholesome. And so you want to look not, I think the whole idea of strengthening men and their values, yes. and, and, and in the case of Melissa, 
looking okay. at women navigating leadership and certainly will touch on the things that matter is when we, we try to build holistic people, they will have holistic relationships. Yes. You know, so as you look at it, if maybe saying marriage is kind of, uh, because we know what we know about even the best marriages we see. Right, but, exactly. But if we begin to speak about commitment, right. responsibility, right. and those things, then we will probably get marriage as a output. Right. 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 So that's something you could look at. Florine, you have been quiet. Felicia, Melissa, let me shut up and you can give your two seconds worth to, to Jackie. What's your thought? Anyone wants to make a comment? I've always seen Jackie's um, calling as forceful. Like, you know, she, she is clearly put in where she is. And it's like what Dave and what you have said, Dr. Yvonne, it's like, you know, she is a force to be reckoned with. And she's just placed there already. It's just, it's just you know, it's really just executing that conviction that she has had six years ago. Yeah. Yeah. And then right. perhaps also grow a team that can yeah. also work, you know, work, work this, this, uh, this call with her. Yeah. So we will pray that before she goes to these possible proposed persons in our communication group, that God will be already there working on their spirit to respond positively to and the doors he will open, he will open. The ones he shut, know that he's the one shutting it because you're going through it with the Holy Spirit. I would like to dovetail on what Felicia said and uh, just about the, because the scope is so magnificent and, and I'm, it just seems like, oh, here's this country and here are all the needs that I'm going to address. It just seems huge. Um, and so I guess my question is twofold that, you know, yeah, do you have a group, uh, partners or, um, people that are in this with you that you're locking arms with it? Um, I don't like for me, I know that even this little thing, this little one bitty baby thing that I'm doing, if I didn't have this sidekick doing it with me, you know, it'd be so much more, uh, difficult, but because I'm locking arms with this other part person and maybe even potentially another one. And we're doing that together. Um, it just so much eases the burden. So I guess that would be one question. And the other is, you know, even I don't not that you should narrow your focus, but um, I think I don't know. I just I feel like there's it's, it's just so massive. Um, uh, would, and I'm wondering if um, you know, just kind of picking one or not picking one, but kind of really driving down deep in one area. I don't know. Those are my thoughts. Jackie, um, if you're responding, um, I know we've done our PLC and you would have heard that. that um, and as I said it already to you, Melissa, and to most of you who will be looking at a broad, broad scope, that even it's, it's a cake. And you're going to probably take one slice of that cake for the dissertation process. And then you will continue your work afterwards. Florine? I, I thought they're all very well done, excellent. But I am amazed that Jackie could um, focus so widely and so intentionally on transformation on so many fronts. I'm, I'm really amazed. Because as I said, when Ben she talks about the problems in Jamaica, they're almost similar to the problems we have in Guyana. When we look at our young men, when we look at dysfunctionality and that type of thing. But she obviously has a heart that um, not only reaches out, but she obviously has a heart that pushes her to work with. And her, her background shows her success 
in working with a variety of things competently and excellently. God give you grace, darling. Thank you, Florian. And guys, um, I, I find this time really a time when, when I see your commitment and when I see you on, on unleashing your call, really unveiling it, and I see you being unleashed into the world, there is a sense of commissioning that I feel, a sense that all I'd want to do now is to bless you to go forth and be in Jesus' name. So let's pray to close this um, at this point. And thank you so much. Dave, thank you for being my traveling companion here today. I value your presence more than you will ever know. And guys, we have been blessed because um, we've had the, the persons who are super busy feeling the dedication to be with us. And I'm so grateful. Lord, you're awesome because you have called your people in every sphere of living. And I thank you for Florian, for Melissa, for Jackie, for Felicia, for Dave, as we come together just to say, Lord, this is what we're seeing. This is what you're placing on our hearts. And we desire to do your will. Lord, we ask you to bring clarity Clarity that will help us to prioritize your needs, what you want us to do, when you want us to do it, and with whom you want us to do it. And Father, I pray that your power will be unleashed on each of these, your servants, and they will go forth fully armored, expecting resistance, but knowing that you have sent them and your will will be done in their lives. So Lord, I consecrate them now to your service anew. And I ask you, Lord, that you be the instrument of wisdom and vision discernment and strength in jesus name we pray amen amen amen, amen. thank okay. you okay guys okay, a beautiful okay. a beautiful time together dave do yes. you have any last word no i just have to get back to work <laughs> all right <laughs> have a great day Bless thank you, you so thank much you. thank you so much blessings so all much. around Thank you, uh, Melissa, Lauren. Bye. bye, guys. Bye. Have a great day, everyone. And night. Good night. Good night, dear. <laughs>